today is the first lecture of fetal imaging series which is uh, going to be the first trimester scan part 1 so as we all know that uh, the pregnancy is divided into uh, broadly divided into three trimester the first trimester is comprised uh, of first 12 weeks of pregnancy Re uh, from the gynecological point of view it extends till first 12 weeks but from radiological and uh, from ultrasound point of view it is from first week from one week to uh, uh, 14 weeks of pregnancy so uh, why do we need to study this is because uh, as a radiologist you cannot get away from doing fetal imaging in your lifetime uh, there will always be gynecologists who would be uh, asking to, for your help uh, in the middle of your night and uh, to uh, asking you where the pregnancy is like whether the pregnancy is within the uterus or whether the uh, whether the pregnancy is in the uterus or is in the adnexa right or whether the pregnancy is viable and then in the middle of the night a woman with bleeding will come and uh, then you have to tell what is the cause of bleeding in this pregnancy you have to answer certain more questions whether the pregnancy is going to be viable or non viable whether it it will have a good outcome or a bad outcome all these findings can be uh, told by a first trimester detailed scan we need skills uh, to do the to this scan because there are two lives which are at stake and i also want you to introduce to the new thing that uh, not the new thing but you must be aware that uh, 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 once you step out uh, of your colleges and you start practicing outside then there will be a lot of competition from outside from uh, both radiological as well as gynecological colleagues which are now doing fetal scans so you need to be at par in skills from them to be able to better do them and uh, remain in the market of course the litigations you are aware that many uh, uh, cases have recently been filed up in the court uh, because of the uh, because of small negligence from the doctor side so we need to be aware of the recent guidelines and what all is expected out of us and of course the pass out exam for instance i have this um, dnd question pa paper from the last year so around 3 to 4 questions i'm seeing that they are uh, coming consistently from fetal imaging for instance in 2023 there was a question on the first trimester ultrasound uh, there was a question on the first trimester ultrasound and the assessment of congenital anomalies by first trimester ultrasound so few of you would be aware that uh, uh, the congenital anomalies that we used to see by a level 2 scan has now been shifted to a level 1 scan where uh, because of the uh, better machines that we have now we are able to rule out many congenital anomalies at 11 to 14 weeks itself then there was a question on recent uh, uh, advances like sono elastography used in obstetric gynae like uterine artery doppler and there were a few more about iugr and uh, uh, role of doppler in pregnancy uh, we will be discuss uh, discussing them in subsequent lectures okay so uh, the uh, in today's lecture i have limited myself to the early pregnancy which is less in going to be less in 11 10 to 11 weeks okay so uh, then i will discuss once you are seeing that there is a pregnancy that there is an embryo how are you going to date this pregnancy this uh, appears like a very small thing for you but it has a very big relevance as uh, as we go through the class we will understand how significant it is to understand how to date a pregnancy then we also need to be aware what are the definite and suspicious finding for a pregnancy failure after that we are going to discuss what are the normal features and what are the normal structures that are supposed to be seen uh, uh, every week in the early first trimester we should have a holistic approach and we always should see the uterus the cervix and the adnexa all and just not be taken away by the fetus itself then we will discuss uh, the the safety of ultrasound ct and mri in the pregnancy and when to use which modality and then of course we'll be taking a few questions so before i start this uh, uh, lecture i thought i should have this uh, a little interactive uh, not to uh, scare you people but i i will just uh, uh, i i want to i want you to you know uh, scratch your mind and start thinking so if you are seeing this uh, ultrasound for example uh, a patient comes to you with beta scg level of uh, say 5000 beta scg level is 5000 beta scg level is uh, suppose 5000 
and you are seeing this can you not able to see a gestational sac so is it okay the one question is that i will not uh, ask you to answer these questions right now but in your mind try to answer these questions to yourself i am not asking you because if you some of you will be scared then so uh, just think that 5000 beta hcg you are not seeing an intrauterine pregnancy or an extrauterine pregnancy is it normal number one thing is this second thing is if i see a pregnancy there is an embryo and uh, i i measure the mean sac diameter suppose mean sac diameter says it's a 6 weeks pregnancy and the crl says 7 weeks pregnancy which one do i um, accept so uh, my gynecological colleague uh, wants me to answer whether the whether the baby is 7 weeks old or 6 weeks old so how do i answer whether i am going to base my dating based on the gestation uh, based on the mean sac diameter or is it going to be based on the crl right so after that also think that suppose i i saw uh, so there is one person who has answered it accurately that it has to be based on the crl very well so suppose i'm seeing a twin pregnancy and now one crl is suppose 6 weeks and the other is 7 weeks how do i date the pregnancy now so whether it has to be based on the 6 weeks one or the 7 weeks one so uh, then these questions we'll answer as we progress uh, through the through the lecture then uh, we'll see what are the features of a pregnancy failure so okay so now let's just start uh, with the with the lecture uh the what are the features of a normal pregnancy every pregnancy they start with this basic history of amenorrhea so in a country like ours with it is a stigma to sometimes you know reveal the history of sexual intercourse and the patient is coming with the history of missed period you have to do a beta hcg test until proven otherwise right so at what level of beta hcg test a test could be considered as positive will be 5 million international units per ml but you need to understand from radiological point of view what are the levels of beta hcg when you are suspecting a gestational sac to be seen so a gestational sac should be seen when the beta hcg is 1000 milli international units per ml now why is it relevant is because many a times a patient would be sent to you at uh, suppose 6 weeks or 7 weeks they say lmp is uh, according to lmp she i am 7 weeks but my beta hcg value is 500 so will you do a scan the answer is no you have to say that i am not expecting anything to be seen at this these this low level of beta hcg you can still do it to see if the pregnancy has failed or if there is any miscarriage but otherwise uh, you are not expecting a gestational or an ongoing pregnancy at this beta hcg level so you need to remember positive beta hcg means more than 5 milli international units per ml at the at uh, gestational sac would be seen at the levels more than 1000 milli international units per ml and maximum by by the levels of 2000 milli international units per ml you need to see it okay so suppose uh, the levels are 2000 suppose it is uh, the levels are 2000 milli international units per ml and i'm not seeing any gestational sac so what will i do here you have to understand that a single value has a relevance but doubling is more important than a single value you will still repeat a beta hcg value after 48 hours so after 48 hours if it doubles that is it becomes like 4000 it means that it is a intrauterine pregnancy right if after 48 hours if i see that these values have increased say 3000 ho gaye hain so in this case you have to suspect ectopic means the values have increased but have not doubled means there is a suspicion for ectopic and if the values are abnormally very high then you need to have a molar pregnancy in uh, your differentials so after uh, you have diagnosed biochemically and clinically that there is a pregnancy so when are you going to when is the radiologist going to come into the picture so when is uh, uh, when when will you do your first uh, fetal ultrasound scan so according to isuo it says according to isuo it says the first the very first scan you need to do is between 11 and 13 plus 6 weeks of gestation and there is no reason to uh, you know do an ultrasound before 11 weeks until and unless there is any clinical concern for example bleeding or you are suspecting an ectopic pregnancy just to confirm an ongoing pregnancy you need not do a scan before 11 weeks because this 
uh, first trimester ultrasound scan has these following objectives. The first objective is to confirm viability. That is, the pregnancy is lying intrauterine or it is extrauterine. Once you have said that there is an intrauterine pregnancy, then you have to say whether there is an embryo with a cardiac activity. Right? So, if you are finding an embryo with a cardiac activity, what is the gestational age, uh, gestational age of this uh, uh, embryo? Then you have to see how many number of uh, pregnancies are there. Is it uh, a triplet, it is quadruplet, or it is a twin pregnancy? Once you establish that there is a multiple pregnancy, then you have to tell about the chorionicity and amnionicity. There will be many times you will see three sacs, but the embryo in two pregnancies. And so this is going to be a vanishing one or maybe a failed sac. So all these purpose will this can be served by uh, at 11 to 14 weeks of pregnancy very well okay so let us just quickly revise our embryology we all know that the fertilization is happening in the ampullary portion of the fallopian tube and then the zygote undergoes rapid cell division and ultimately enter the uterine cavity on day five at this stage a cavity occurs uh, develops within the embryo and divides uh, within the zygote and divides it into the inner cell mass and the outer cell mass right uh, so it is going to divide. Uh, are you able to see my uh, arrow? So it is the inner cell mass and the outer cell mass. Uh, the inner cell mass is going to form the fetus and the outer cell mass will interact with the decidua uh, and will uh, form the placenta and the chorion. So the, fi finally the implantation will happen on the day 9 post fertilization and this uh, and this uh, implantation on the day 8 to 9 is going to be the first evidence on ultrasound. If you see the first evidence will be the implantation when the gestational sac is around 2 to 3 millimeters in size. So this is just a chorionic cavity here. As you can see embryologically, this is just a primitive yolk sac which cavity you are seeing. And it has an ecogenic rim from the uh, uh, trophoblast which, uh, which is of course cyto and syncytial trophoblast that will form the ecogenic rim.